What if we could use our knowledge about functional brain anatomy, neurotransmitters, proteins and genes and apply it to individual patients? Is it a science fiction utopia that we someday in psychiatry will use brain imaging, blood tests or neurogenetic tests on our patients to individualize the treatments? Like they already do in oncology, cardiology or rheumatology. Proponents for the so-called precision psychiatry framework mean that we are on a good way to get there and that it would be the next natural step for clinical psychiatry to take. The idea of precision psychiatry is to translate the latest decades of neuroscientific breakthroughs into clinical practice in order to be able to tailor the treatments for the individual patient. It would take a lot more research and reorganization of clinical psychiatry to reorient in this precision psychiatry direction. But if successful, there are also some major potential advantages for the patients. Imagine being able to predict which patients with psychosis will develop schizophrenia or which patients with major depression that will benefit from antidepressant medicine and also who need psychotherapy. Yes, it would really mean a paradigm shift for clinical psychiatry. Not only a radical shift in view on the role of the psychiatrist and her team, on psychiatric disease and being a psychiatric patient, but also on the task for psychiatry in general. Not least, it would arguably also help to finally bridge the gap between neuroscientific research and clinical psychiatry, a gap that is now very wide. But there isn't a consensus that precision psychiatry is an all-through good idea. Some argue that most likely we will never understand the brain on that high resolution level. It can actually make a difference for psychiatric clinical work with individual patients. That it's only a new version of the same vain dream that natural scientists have always had about finally seeing the constituents of the mind in the microscope. Others mean that we would lose important human aspect of psychiatry if we introduce technological solutions to clinical problems. The question is, is psychiatry ready for precision? We will introduce you to the thinking of precision psychiatry so that you can build your own idea about this. And we will do it by making you acquainted to some of the basic terms and concepts that are most often discussed in this field. Omics, computational psychiatry, RDOC, and uh, biomarkers. So to begin with, omics. Omics is a relatively new and modern word in psychiatry. However, in biology, it has been around much longer. Omics refers to all these large-scale studies of ohms, big multifaceted biological systems. And there are many different omics, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and so forth. In psychiatry, we also talk about phenomics, the study of all the phenotypes and behaviors, connectomics, the study of all the connections between brain cells and brain regions, and enviromics, which is the study of all the environmental factors. In precision psychiatry, the ambition is to characterize an individual on all these omics level. What is her specific genome, proton, connectom, phenome, and enverom? And based on this information, to make precise diagnosis and treatment suggestions. Like they do in, for example, oncology, where genetic and hormonal investigations suggest specific treatment. Next term, computational psychiatry. This refers to the complex mathematical methods needed to analyze large and complicated psychiatric data sets, such as those including omics, or interaction between omics. For example, to correlate neurocognitive data with results from functional MRI scanning, or to see patterns in genome and virome interactions for specific human traits. In computational psychiatry, multiple levels and types of computation are combined with multiple types of data in order to improve understanding, prediction and treatment of mental illness. 
Next up, RDOC, which is an abbreviation for Research Domain Criteria. RDOC is a suggestion for a new systemization of psychiatric diagnosis. It isn't used in clinical practice yet, but more and more so for research purposes. RDOC differs from the traditional diagnostic systems in psychiatry, ICD and DSM, in that it focuses on the underlying biomedical mechanisms and neurocognitive constructs instead of the symptoms. The RDOC aims to provide a foundation for organizing evolving neuroscientific knowledge on the functional brain domains involved in psychiatric disease and also their underlying constructs and biological systems. So by doing so, it aligns well with the idea of precision psychiatry. It isn't hard to see actually how information about the omics of a certain psychiatric patient analyzed with computational methods could be placed in the RDOC system to suggest a precise diagnosis and a precise treatment plan. Another word that often pops up when it comes to precision psychiatry is biomarkers. A biomarker is an objective measure of a biological process in the body. Also disease-related processes or responses to a therapeutic or pharmacological intervention. It's less complicated than it sounds. Body temperature, for example, is a biomarker for fever. Leukocyte concentration in blood is a biomarker on inflammatory activity and an electrocardiogram is a biomarker for the electrical activity of the heart. In psychiatry there are fewer biomarkers available than in most other medical specialities. There are some EEGs are used to diagnose sleep disorders. Spinal fluid tests are used in investigating memory disorders. And blood tests are used to monitor substance use disorders. So, in psychiatry, we are very good when it comes to investigate the symptoms in detail in every patient. But not very good when it comes to analyze the underlying neurobiology of each patient's ailment. The relative lack of biomarkers in psychiatric clinical work is to many a symbol for the need of reorganizing psychiatry to become more precise. It doesn't seem as an impossible task. We already have advanced functional brain imaging techniques where we can visualize a patient's neural networks and neurogenetic tests, for example. However, despite the la latest decades advances in these fields, there are still very few and reliable biomarkers available. To wrap up, a better understanding of what neurobiological mechanisms or systems might underpin different psychiatric symptoms could be helpful to design interventions that are more precise and this is the idea of precision psychiatry. Time will tell if psychiatry becomes a new member of the exclusive club of medical specialities that use advanced tests to make precise diagnosis of the individual patient based on which mechanisms underlies his or her disease and choose specific treatments accordingly. <laughs>